Kaufman. It is our pleasure to welcome to the show for the first time uh, ESPN NFL analyst, former NFL executive Mike Tannenbaum, uh, who's got some great insight for us on how the commanders uh, start this rebuild uh, from here. So, Mike, first of all, hello and welcome to the show. Yeah, great to be with you. Good afternoon. Uh, so, uh, let's start actually with the report this morning from your colleagues at ESPN. Always good when, when our days start with a combo Schefter Woj report. But, you know, Josh Harris goes out and hires Bob Myers and Rick Spielman to be a part of this search committee to hire the next football executive, help hire the next head coach. When you've been a part of those head coach hiring processes before, like what are those like and, and how do those two people, those two men, you think work with ownership to, to get this done for Washington? Yeah, uh, I know both of them well. I think the world of both of them. Um, knew Bob uh, through my time when uh, I was an agent. I actually represented Steve Kerr and did Steve's deal at Golden State with Bob. Oh, wow. Bob. Bob's a really smart man, kind of beyond reproach. The, the four rings speak for themselves. And Rick's a guy that I've been friends with for 25 years. So um, both men are smart, insightful. They'll bring a different dynamic. And I, I think, you know, I think what's really interesting to me is. I think it's insightful into Josh Harris's sort of like decision-making paradigm, meaning I believe like he's more of a group sort of uh, collaborator. You know, you have Dave Blitzer, obviously Magic Johnson. So I thought it was sort of like instructive. And as he puts his like stamp on the franchise, his way he's going to go about making big decisions. Yeah, no doubt about it. Did you deal in your time as an agent, obviously crossing some into the NBA as you did with Steve, did you deal with Harris and, and any of his people directly at all? Or at the very least, you're, like what's kind of your read on him from being in those circles? Yep, no, I didn't deal with them. Um, but, you know, just he's obviously well thought of. You know, it's it's a well-capitalized group, which in this day and age is important because you want to be able to attract and retain the best people and give them the best support. Um, you know, it certainly has, you know, a very good reputation. And I think... You know, as he said today, this is a massive opportunity. You know, I think he basically came in, was a great listener, and kind of helped serve for a period of months. And now he's going to go hire, you know, the, the people that he believes in. And, um, you know, I thought it was a little bit of, like, being half pregnant. You know, uh, Martin Mayhew, Martin Herney are still there, you know, two good men. Um, but it was a little unusual that he took a little bit of a half-measured approach on that end of it. Yeah, what it, I, that was something I thought about a lot over the past couple of weeks. Mike Tannenbaum, ESPN NFL analyst, with me, Craig Hoffman here. It's the Hoffman Show on the Team 980. Because I think there's something about being like, no, we're making a clean break. Rivera obviously was going to go today, but not just uh, the two men you mentioned, the Martys, but also Eric Bieniemy uh, is kept on here for now. What is that kind of decision-making process of who you let go? Because there's a logistical side to this, right? Like if, if the new head coach or the new front office person wants to reassign any of those men, you don't want to fire and then rehire them. But kind of the, the message to the organization of that clean break and we're starting over, how do you balance that as an executive? Yeah, and, and just to take the listeners a little bit behind the scenes, you know, if you put yourself in those respective people's shoes, you know, they have goals, jobs insecurities, dreams, and, you know, families to feed as well. And, you know, what I've always said, you know, when I've led organizations is to say, hey, look, you know, we are looking, we're in the marketplace, obviously, um, and you should be as well looking, and we're not going to be unreasonable. You know, sometimes you hear, unfortunately, of teams not letting other people, you know, look for employment while there's this transition going on, which I always felt was unfair. So kind of like we're looking, you're looking, and, you know, things may work out that Eric Bieniemy or, Martin Mayhew are back in the same role, maybe a different role. Um, but, you know, in fairness, you know, they should have the ability to seek their options as well. Uh, so uh, one of the things that I think is interesting about this search committee that Harris has put together is Rick, who is a phenomenal football man. This is no shot at Rick, but he's the only football man. There aren't any other football opinions in the room. When you look especially at that, whether it's a GM or VP of president or VP of football ops, president of football ops, whatever that position winds up being, how important is it for the people doing the hiring to have a really strong kind of football background versus some of the leadership and culture characteristics that uh, not just the businessmen in the room uh, in Mitch Rails and, and Josh Harris and Magic Johnson have, but uh, the other sports kind of culture building stuff that obviously Magic has, but also that Bob Myers brings to this? Yeah, I think it's a combination of both. And I think that's why it's smart to have Rick in the room because, you know, they're, they're, I think you sort of like bifurcate these you know, discussions that you have with prospective candidates, meaning, um, you know, you want to talk about culture and going about scaling leadership and all things that go along with, 
you know, building an organization. But there's a lot of things about running an NFL team that you need to have that sort of like micro approach. The details matter and understanding, you know, there's a lot more differences than there are similarities between football and basketball. I mean, there are some similarities, but there's a lot of things that are different. So I think that was uh, a prescient move by uh, Josh Harris to bring Rick in. Uh, as someone who knows both sports, like w- what would you describe those differences as? Well, in basketball, it's very much a player-led sort of ecosystem where, you know, a player or players, and there's not a ton of them, but, you know, the, the A players, the LeBron Jameses and Steph Currys of the world, they have an inordinate amount of power, meaning like they could basically have head coaches and GMs fired. That's just the reality of it. And um, in the – NFL, that just doesn't happen. Even a player of, like, the A-plus statures, they, they may weigh in from time to time. But because in the offseason, we go up to 90 players. That's 90 transactions of signing players and the, the complexities of a cap. You're, you're dealing with things literally every day, and you have a whole staff of people that are just monitoring that. So it's just different. It's much more of a team-oriented approach than the NBA. Mike Tannenbaum, ESPN NFL analyst, is with us. He's also part of the 33rd team if you want to check out their stuff. Uh, Of course, Mike, an executive in the league with the Jets and Dolphins, amongst others, uh, over his career. Um, So that is... That kind of leads me to a question I would have asked Josh Harris today. Unfortunately, they ran out of time in the press conference, and so I was I was there and never got a microphone, Mike. You hate to see it, but um, I, I was curious, like if what he's picked up in the last five and a half months of being in football, like what are his firm beliefs in football right now? If I were to ask you that question, with where we are in 2024 in the NFL. Like, who are the kinds of people and and what are the kinds of things that you want to hear come out of their mouths that shows that they understand where the game is and where it's going? Yeah, great question. I would say a few things come to mind. One is, like, how incredibly small the margins are. Like, they're incredibly small, and things change quickly. The Jaguars went from the presumptive one seed in the AFC to out. You know, Miami looked like a Super Bowl favorite. Now they're struggling with injuries. Um, but the innate ability to develop people – be it coaches, staff, players, whatever, that is truly outcome determinative because more of the money is going to less of the players. So if you're fortunate enough to have an A player like a Patrick Mahomes or a Joe Burrow or Lamar Jackson, they're going to get paid. They're going to get paid an irrational amount of the cap. So how you fill out the rest of your roster is critically important. So that's why, to me, um, understanding that, and it's not – you know, the NBA, like, hey, we're going to get James Harden and put our feet up on the desk. Like, it is something that you're, you're, you're truly working at uh, 24 hours a day. Mike Tannenbaum with us for another minute or two here on the Hoffman Show. When you look at this opening here in D.C., uh, let's start off the GM level. Uh, I believe there's four open right now. Would you say this is the best job on the market, somewhere in the middle, worst job, when you compare it to Vegas and, and the other spots that are open right now? Yeah, I would, I would just exclude they, uh, the Chargers because I think Justin Herbert has a chance to be a Hall of Fame quarterback. So I think that's a unique situation you know, of itself. Um, I love the Washington situation. Look, Josh Harris is going to bring a lot of very unique attributes, specifically you know, his other sport. Like if I was running them, I, I'd want to spend as much time with the 76ers or the Devils and, and, and listen and learn um, about how they go about things. Um, but look, you, know, you have a – Obviously, you're going to get a great quarterback. You're at the top of the draft. Um, you got tons of cap room. You have a fan base that's just dying for a winner. And I think that's a lot of, like, foundations, like, to start with. And, look, I think the Giants can be had right now. Clearly, Philadelphia and Dallas are, are good organizations. But um, I think there's a lot more good there than, uh, than bad. And then last but not least, when you look at it from the head coach level, one, like where would you rank it? I'm guessing somewhere in the same because it's so many of the same factors. And is there any any of the kind of known candidates that you think would be a particularly good fit here? Yeah, I mean, there's a ton of guys like from Dan Quinn to Mike McDonald. I've worked with Ben Johnson, uh, Aaron Glenn. I've worked with like most of these guys. They're all, you know, incredible men. Uh, great character, and also um, just really good football coaches. And I think, like, the most important thing, this feels a little bit to me like what we had at the Jets in 2009 where we hired Rex Ryan, drafted Mark Sanchez, you know, paired them together. We were fortunate to have a really good run with those two guys at the head of the organization. And I think in some ways, I'm sure in the back of Josh's mind, 
what he's saying is like, wow, if we can come out of this with a bright coach that you know could be our guy for the next ten years and pair him with you know presumptively Jaden Daniels, Drake May, maybe Caleb Williams, um, you know, we're quickly changing sort of like you know the trajectory of our franchise. Yeah, no doubt about it. Mike, this was really, really great. Uh, much appreciate your time and your expertise, and hopefully we can have you back sooner rather than later. Sounds great. Appreciate you having me. Thank A- you. Absolutely. Mike Tannenbaum, everybody, ESPN NFL analyst. Hey, this is DA, and you're listening to The Hoffman Show on the Team 980 and the Odyssey app.